All right, so what we're doing here is I've got these uh, Harbor Freight tools, uh, this one of these temporary garages, and we're turning it into a permanent structure that's 124 square feet or less. So if you'll find, and that's big enough to hold a car. So if you guys are in an area where you have 124, 120 square feet or less that you can have, that you have an unpermitted building, um, this is the way to convert one of these into a garage, into a sheet metal building. And uh, here's what you need to do. So normally, here's the parts. If you look here, if you buy one of these, you're going to see that you're going to have this part right here. It looks like this, where you have one that slides inside. So what we did is we're cutting six inches off of each side right here so right here and right here and this is the top the ridge okay we're gonna cut six inches off here six inches off here then what we do is we slide a coupler a EMT coupler over the top of this end so that you only have to do one cut you could actually do it in the middle if you wanted to um, but you'd have to cut six inches out and then have you know make two cuts so it's easier if you just make one cut right these are the making two cuts so what we did is we measured from this seam over six inches right here put a mark with a marker where's my marker at oh well uh we're gonna put a marker right here and then we're gonna go ahead and cut out that six inch section and we're using a tubing cutter but you could use whatever you needed um i got this tubing cutter also from hf tools i believe um they have them there and they're cheap and so that way you get a nice perfect cut and not that it really matters if it's a half inch off or something like that it's really not going to make much difference in you know the scheme of things when you get all done but um it's always best to have it exactly right um so anyway but i'm going to cut a half, six inches off each side and then what we've done is we poured an eight foot wide slab okay eight feet wide by 15 feet so from 15 feet from here to here is 15 feet so if you go 8 by 15 that makes exactly 120 square feet and what you're going to do is you're going to put your uh, poles and mount them right to here so as we go I'm going to do a series of videos on this to show you how that we're going to do this and uh, hopefully we'll learn from our mistakes and uh, show you guys so that at the end of this video you'll be able to see this is going to be a series of videos all linked together um, you'll be able to see that you can turn yours into a permanent structure so like say let's say you bought one and a couple years later the tent's failing so you're like oh man i gotta go get a new tent you know and it costs like whatever maybe you're tired of doing that you want it to be a permanent structure but you need it to be legal because maybe you got pissed off neighbors or whatever and you just want to keep it legal so what we're going to do actually and i believe this is going to work out is we're actually going to take these anchors and put them into the concrete if it doesn't work then i'll get something that's emt that will work to do the same type of thing it'll be either maybe i'll use an l clamp i'm not sure um, for the bottom of the structure and then on the very ends we're going to use these pieces either mount them like this or like this and we'll use a hammer drill and anchor it into our concrete and uh, you really you can't buy a, a permanent building for this, we're figuring it's gonna be around six hundred dollars or so uh, six or eight seven hundred dollars you really can't build a permanent steel building uh, for that or even a, 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 a shed for that price I mean it's it's good you, know, you can get one of those cheap little tough shed things and they're not built very strong. This will be permanent and last forever. All right, we'll talk to you in the next portion of this. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to build your own steel building on the cheap. Um, maybe you don't wanna spend a lot of money, but you'd like to have a garage. That's what I'm doing here. Uh, in our city, you can have um, up to 120 square feet that you don't need a permit if you don't have power in it so um, they call it a shed but it, you can make it a garage size so what I'm doing is I'm going 8 feet by 15 feet 
and I poured a slab, okay, crappy slab, but it doesn't matter. Um, especially when you're pouring it by yourself by hand, or not by hand, I used a, one of those trailer things, and uh, they don't back up very well, so you have to rake everything, so it's a lot, lot more work, and uh, it's just a lot for an older guy. So anyway, so, and what I bought is, let's look at this box here. So what I bought is this Cover Pro from Harbor Freight Tools, uh, you know, canopy. And people go, what? You know, use a canopy for, for you know, for a temp, for a garage. Well, it's good for, you know, one of these is portable. But I'm going to make it a permanent garage, and I'll show you that in a second. So it comes in this kit like this. You get a whole bunch of stuff. You may not use all of it, but the main thing I bought it for was the poles. Okay, and because I can't even buy the poles for the price I paid for the kit. You know, I couldn't even buy conduit for that price. It was like 200 bucks. So then I'm going to buy this stuff here. I'll show you. I'm actually going to buy these things here. These are called PBR panels. So it comes in a three foot section and it goes from here to there so let's take a look they have it in 16 foot lengths so i'll have to cut a foot off to be under uh to be in legal and uh what i'm doing is i'm also modifying the frame and i'll show you that so you know, i'm going to get these pbr panels they had these at home depot for about 50 bucks a piece um, but i found them on craigslist the guy has them for 40 brand new and uh I'm gonna get them from him. Maybe it will get them from him last one I ordered that many of them because I got two two of these buildings. So these buildings come, or these uh, temporary garages come in 17, 10 by 17. Okay, so that's obviously bigger than this lab is. And they kind of have a tilted wall. And I really didn't want a tilted wall because then I'd be at like six feet wide at the top and I might be putting a van in here so what I'm looking at here is uh, uh, making it go making the walls go straight up and down. So what I figured out is that these are EMT connectors. okay? So what I did is I shortened it at this seam right here. You see where this is right here? the seam. there was a seam there. Um, it was kind of like this and it and I screwed these together where they just supposed to just slide together for temporary shelters um, But this I screwed together so it's easier to easier to manage and I'm gonna have it be stronger that way and So I just shortened all I did was cut from here six inches over and I put a slip-on EMT connector on here on the other end up there, okay it's easier and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my footings up down here so this first pole goes into the ground like this I'm gonna get some uh, redheads and shoot those in the ground into the concrete hopefully this concrete is dry enough I don't know if it'll work quite this early but I'm gonna shoot those into the ground go ahead and put some redheads in there and these are gonna go this way and then in the middle, this is what comes in the kit, okay? In the middle section, there's these. So at the two far ends, I'm going to shoot those into the ground, and I'm actually going to put these ones this direction on the in the back so that they aren't conflicting with the car going inside of it, if that's what you're trying to do. And then these go in the middle. I'll put those redheads in the ground. Now what I found is when I put these things on here, it can be easily bent. These can be bent. These poles can be bent in to fit in that eight foot section. So if that's what you're trying to do, stay in code, um, which I highly recommend if you, if you some, some areas are 100 square feet, some areas are 120, you can do 120 square feet, then you'll get this done, no problem. And, uh, 
So I'll bend them in and I'll put them in their footings where they're supposed to go. And uh, then what I'm going to do is get my PBR panels, start in the top, because you want to do and do your do your top piece like that, and then I'll be putting the PBR panels on. Um, so anyway, I'm going to do a series of videos on this, so you guys can find search the channel and you'll find more on this uh, if you're interested in doing it. All right, so. That's what I'm doing, and uh, I'll talk to you in the next video. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to install a concrete anchor. Um, things you need are the anchors. I get these red heads here, right here. I also have Hilties. They're a little more expensive. Pretty much the same damn thing. I don't know. Uh, maybe they're better. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. You need your concrete to be pretty well cured. This one's okay. It's you know it's been over a week, but it's still kind of green. So um, then what I do is uh, so for these things I'm just gonna go ahead and they need a hammer drill, which I got this from Harbor Freight Tools. Had this thing a little while and uh, some hammer drill bits and they comes with some of them but uh, they have these little packets of bits like that right there for like 10 bucks just buy one of those because it'll have the right sizes i think the other ones are metric so um so for a 3 8 anchor um some places say that you need a 7 16 bit but i used a 3 8 bit um, so probably the same for quarter inch and half inch. I think you just need the drill size that's the si same And you want it to be fairly tight and uh, I'll show you how it works So for this project what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just use the Pole to line up because I just want it to line up to the edge. I don't want to be too close to the edge here So and then um, I just go ahead and hammer drill it Really fast. It's good to get a. It's never bad to have too big of a hammer drill. <laughs> the bigger I think, the better. So um, we might have to wobble it around a little bit to get it to fit into the hole. So I think it's better if it's tight than too loose. Um, and you want the hole to be about the same distance as this fella here. I don't know if you can even see that. The same distance as this thing so you can put your drill in the hole mark it with your finger make sure it's not too hot about the same distance so that's about the same I just go by feel you can put a piece of tape on your drill bit if you want um, that's about the same distance because it needs to go all the way to here okay and then you just what I do is since sometimes you booger up the thread, so oh, shoot. <sighs> sometimes you'll booger up the threads putting them in. So what I do is I actually put on this situation. I'm just going to go ahead and put this thing here on. So what I do is I just go ahead and put the washer on and the bolt on because sometimes you'll booger up the threads. You're usually not going to be taking this thing back off for any amount of time. This thing is a little bit, these are anchors are a little bit short. It's actually okay. I'd rather have them a little bit short than a little, you know, I mean, I'd rather have them longer, but I just grabbed the wrong ones and it doesn't really matter because this pole can get smashed down a little bit. Just hit it with a hammer. You'll notice that it'll splay out. Get the right size wrench. I had the wrong one. Tighten it down. And you're good to go. That's how you anchor. So, I sell these at Home Depot, the hardware section. These are the ones I use, redheads. And uh, there you go. There's your anchor. It's anchored into the concrete. It's pretty sturdy. Um, that's all there is to it.
All right, talk to you in the next video. Uh, this is how we do it here. We got the concrete anchors in here. I got three eighths red heads I'm using uh, for the bottoms. They fit perfect in the holes. Uh, and then we assemble it and work our way back using a ladder. That's why I'm doing it. And what I did is I measured the top from here, the center of this pole to the center of that pole. Then I'm gonna measure from the ground, the center of this pole, the center of this pole. So I know where I'm putting my anchors. And then for you guys who are crazy or whatever, you guys want everything perfect and level and straight, go ahead and get your level out and check, double check everything if you want to do that. I'm just, I don't really care because once it's up, you know, if it's a little bit off square, you know, what I'm doing, it's not going to really matter that much. Um, or if it's not completely, you know, the building's not 100% level, which I can straighten out with the siding. So that's up to you. But um, that's the next step, and you just kind of work your way along using the same Harbor Freight Tools frame. And so now you end up with this nice straight wall, and see how they, well, normally it will want to be out here, but as soon as all it takes is just a little push, and it goes right into place. And the, the anchors that come with it, these things here, <clears throat> have a nice big hole in them. So you can do whatever you want. So I go ahead and mark mine here. Mine just so happens to be 67 inches. And then it might be different on yours. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and put this thing on the bottom. Shove it into place with two hands, of course. mark my right where my mark is and then I'll just hammer drill right through this throw my red head in there put my screw in and that's what I did over there all right and I'm just gonna put one anchor per base one hole I mean I have a big steel building and it's only got uh, eight anchors in it and this is gonna have eight anchors in it so um, and they're half inch and it's a lot bigger building than this is so and I've had 80 mile an hour winds and it didn't blow over. So anyway, let's hope that this one's as strong. I don't know if it will be or not. We'll see at the end and uh, stay tuned. All right, so we can just take a look here at what I did here. Uh, these are all anchored in. It's pretty sturdy right now. Once you put the sheet metal on, it should even be stronger. Uh, I'm gonna highly recommend to put a ceiling joist in uh, because you start putting that weight on there and it probably will want to splay out and uh, if you don't put ceiling joists on there uh, what I'm gonna use is I need extra height clearance so I'm gonna only go from right here I mean if you can do it you could should probably do from right here which will still give you oh six foot eight clearance so you can get a pretty high vehicle in here. Um, if you go from somewhere in this joint near this, I would say right here, if you went across to there, you're gonna get the most strength. But I'm gonna have to go from the middle of here. And what I'm gonna use is a uh, half inch uh, EMT, because it's cheap and I have lots of it. So, I mean, you might want to get three quarter, like I said, if you really are in high wind areas. And then, um, and definitely, um, if you're in a high wind area, you definitely want, you might want to put one across the this side or even crisscross, you know, to give you that strength for movement that way on the side that you're not driving in and out of or going in and out of. Um, so, and remember, that these I did not just use the screws that are in them I actually put sheet metal screws in there so keep that in mind don't just use the clamps because that'll take away from the strength too and make sure you screw every one of these together at least with one screw um, you know that should be strong enough I don't know maybe two if you really are crazy or you just want to do more um, that's up to you I'll just, I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to see how it works and if I think it needs more strength I'll add the screws later. 
So this is the structure. We're gonna put PBR panels on this and uh, see how it looks. It should be plenty big enough for a car. And the thing is, um, the thing that's cool about this is because it's eight feet wide. You can put a nice, you know, that's, you know, you're not going to have tons and tons of room. You're not going to get a Cadillac in here, really, be able to get in and out of it. But that will keep you under the square footage legal legality um, for a garage in a lot of cities and states. Um, depends on where you're at. Okay, so look at lo your local codes. Check all that out. I did already. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys in the next portion of the video. All right, so here we go. We're putting uh, PBR panels on. These come in this Galvaloom stuff. It looks pretty good. I mean, it's cheap. The cheapest way out was the Galvaloom. I was going to get painted ones, but they were like a dollar more a foot. dollar and a quarter more a foot. So I mean, that adds up real quick. It'd be like $400. So it's like uh, the cost of that was like not worth it to me because I can paint them. This is actually, I don't know what kind of galvanized this is. It's galvaloom. It looks different than regular galvanized, but it doesn't look quite like, uh, uh, you know, paint lock galvanized. So I don't know. I'll have to do a paint sample on it, see if it sticks. But we go ahead and just put the screws in down here down in the middle, put them in the flat areas here. Um, we'll put one here after we put this panel underneath and, uh, that's the tricky part is actually doing the sides the roof parts easiest and so you could even make just an awning if you wanted to with this but I really wouldn't trust it because this thing without the sides it's a bit rickety but once you get the sides in there and the end it should be pretty rigid and then we're gonna add some supports as needed like I said there's we're probably gonna end up putting a conduit piece from here to there you know from here to there and then the same thing there all the way down and then the center we're going to put like a, a ceiling joist in there or a rafter in there so we're going to put a small rafter but i want it up higher because if you know to make it the strongest you should put your rafter from here somewhere near the bend over and that would be the strongest but i need it to, i need the extra clearance so i'll put it up higher all right i'll talk to you in the next portion so here we're wrapping this thing up just about here um just got to put the trim piece on the edges here uh got to cut a piece for the bottom um so it takes one two three four five six seven eight nine and you have to cut the ninth one to fit if you're going to make the same size unit um, and always the question is is it strong well I can't do this with one hand but I grabbed onto that bar and hung and I'm two, over 200 pounds so it's pretty strong let's look it's really rigid on this end <clears throat> now I haven't even done any reinforcements either I mean, it's super rigid over here. You can barely wiggle the building. Um, I've got to put some extra screws in the bottom still. Uh, the main thing I'd be worried about it is if I have this end open, uh, wind could catch in here and lift the whole thing up. So, on a really windy day. So, um, I'm going to make sure I put in more than one screw in each one of the uh, anchors. So that's something I'm going to recommend to do. Um, I still may end up putting a bar from here to here. Uh, I don't know yet. Um, and if I have some sheet metal around, uh, I don't know if I'll have any left over. I may make at least the top section and that will make that a lot stronger. If I put a piece across here, um, to come down a little bit, I have to also bring the vehicle in here that I'm going to put in here and see if it's going to fit as far as the height goes. It should be fine width wise for a smaller car. Um, you should be able to park it off to the right a little bit and get your door open and get it out. Um, but it's mainly for storage, classic car storage or something like that. So, um, it should be fine there. I don't know what else. I'll, 
I'll, uh, when I think of some other stuff, I'll add this to the video. Talk to you in the next one. Next, next, next section. All right, so I'm going to talk to you guys about what <clears throat> this type of material is. Um, right here, this is called a PBR panel. And depending on the press that they have, okay, how these things are made, I'll tell you how they're made so that you can understand how you can order it. And uh, one of the things I had to figure out. So um, what what I found was I tried to order this, I tried to get it, and I was like, hey, do they have it? They have it at Home Depot and stuff like that, right? But they charge a lot more there. Um, and I couldn't figure out whether, you know, they, uh, they were like 16 feet, 12 foot panels. They didn't have like, I couldn't order what I wanted was a 15 foot panel. So I'd have to buy a 16 and cut them. And this stuff's a bit of a pain to cut if you um, want to cut it, you know, why not just order it to the right size. So what you got to find, what I found is uh, like in San Jacinto, um, there's a, there's also one in Riverside, and I looked on Craigslist, and uh, first I looked for PBR panel, but nobody, the guys who sell this stuff didn't even have on their stuff PBR panel, it just said sheet metal. So look up for those different things on Craigslist, and maybe you'll find some vendor that wants to sell more of it, so they'll put their stuff on Craigslist. Okay, but how the stuff is made is it comes in a roll, okay? It's a roll of flat metal and what they do is they roll it out and they put it in the machine press it they roll it out cut it put it in the machine it presses it this big machine and makes these panels okay and so when you if you find the manufacturer that makes it you know and there's tons of them all over the place because the presses aren't that expensive um, I was looking at one for fifty five thousand dollars so I was like hmm interesting so uh, the places that make it uh, are all over the place there's like one in there's two in within 50 miles of where I live so they're all over the place and especially you guys with horse corrals and stuff like that they're probably got one of these guys near you so uh, they like I said they put it in a roll it comes out it stamps so they, what they do is they can shear it to any size except you know they can't do like to the quarter of an inch or something like that the guy said no nah. it's like around an inch or something like that is about as close as he can get it and uh so he says you start getting that picky forget it i'm not doing it <laughs> i said no i don't want you to so anyway because the quarter inch ain't gonna make any bit, bit of difference on this on a building like this there's gonna be somewhat out of square you're gonna have hangover you're gonna be too short some places you're gonna be playing around with it a little bit to get it to fit so um the PBR panels, you want to find the, somebody who makes these, um, manufactures them. They stack them up for you. They'll put them on a pallet, and then you have to go and you can go pick them up. Or some of the places actually deliver, and they charge, of course, for that. So anyway, that's what those things are. That's what that sheet metal is called. So when you try and find it, um, I did find that depending on the press, there's a difference. This is different. Some of them. So, like, if you're trying to match up this stuff on a steel building that you already have, um, this part's going to be maybe a little bit different. So, when you tuck it underneath, it may not fit quite right. If you're not, if you're so, if you're worried about it being perfect, you know, it ain't going to happen. But if you, um, unless you get it from the same person, same press, because uh, I saw on my other building, this part's not quite as far up as these are. So I don't know if it's just this manufacturer that I got this from, but, um, you know, if you tuck it underneath, you're not going to really notice. So I don't know what the big fuss is about. So I'll just tell you that, you know, it may not look quite like this where they're tucked underneath nice and tight. You probably have a gap or something, but once you get stand back a few feet, you know, who cares? It's a steel building. You got it, you know. So anyway, uh, so that's how you get the material. That's what you want to look for if you want to build one of these. Um, talk to the next section. All right, so I started out with this canopy from Harbor Freight Tools. You guys see that? Uh, it's one of these canopy things that everybody buys. And uh, I wanted a permanent building, but 
you know, to buy steel building for the size, it was going to cost me like two grand, fifteen hundred dollars, something like that. And uh, plus, then the poles might be too big. So I built this building right here, and I'm going to show you guys how I did it with this Harbor Freight Tools setup. So these are called PBR panels, okay? And uh, they are in three foot sections. You can see right here where they overlap and they overlap up there and over at the top. And I'll show you from the inside so it's a little easier to see. Um, so what I did is, you know, this is, if this looks familiar, you've seen the Harbor Freight Tools uh, pole setup is uh, I want it to be under the 124 square, 120 square foot limit. So 124, uh, 120 square feet is the limit for where I live for a building without a permit. So, and out here, they do not allow steel buildings except when they're 100, 120 square feet or less. So here's what I did. Uh, I got the Harbor Freight Tools uh, setup they have. It's, you know, like 179 with a coupon, all right? And I used the poles from that, okay? And if you guys might notice that the that they are uh, the pole the the tent is seventeen by ten, and the slab I have here is eight feet wide by fifteen, which is one hundred and twenty square feet. And uh, the thing the reason I wanted this is because I'd have a really it wouldn't take up a lot of my space. Those other ones are a little wider. Um, if I bought a steel building, plus it's a lot cheaper to do it this way. And, uh, yeah, it's really sturdy. Here's, you, 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 it wouldn't fall over. I don't think you could blow it over with it unless you had like a hundred plus mile an hour winds. Then I think almost anything could blow over. But, um, yeah, what I did is I actually narrowed this thing. So I'm going to show you guys how I did that if you're trying to do the same thing. Or you can just buy the PBR panels and put them on your frame but you're going to need to do some improvements to it and make sure that you put a back wall on that's one of the big things um and also this gable end here so it strengthens it up a lot so what i did is i needed to take a foot out of the top and then if you notice that they kind of go down at an angle uh the harbor freight tools ones do um and i need to straighten it up so what i did is i cut six inches out of each side oh, yeah, yeah. six inches out of each side and those are actually EMT conduit uh, connectors for one and a quarter inch so I cut them out it looked like this I cut a six inch section like this out then the coupler slid over here and it slides over this pipe and looks like that and then I screwed them in place so I did put a sheet metal screw in them too, um, so they don't come apart. All right, on all the things. So that narrowed it a foot at the top. And then, if you look here, it's pretty pretty um, it's pretty much level. It's straight. It's per, uh, plumb, and uh, so. Uh, all I did was I used all their existing stuff these things here and These things here and what I did is I hammered drill and put a redhead in so I used a 3 8 redhead put it in the place and uh, Hammered drill a hole hammered hammered the redhead in tighten them up and then put the posts in here And then I just bent them just by pushing it very easily into that so side mount one side and then the other side I just Put the foot on and then push it into place, hammer drill the hole, put the red head in. So the same thing, I did this one this direction so you can drive in. And I did this one over here, um, this direction for um, sway a little bit to help out with that. Um, 
Yeah, if you were really worried about heavy snow loads or something like that, you might want to just put in your rafters up high, or you could put them down low at, you know, whatever that is about. That's about six foot eight where those are. So that's high enough for most garage doors are usually six foot eight. And you can walk underneath that. So um, I need a little bit higher height than that um, for something I'm putting in here. So I went ahead and uh, did a little bit more than that. I'm, I went and made this a little higher, see another foot higher so that I can get a van in here with a rack on top. So, um, so anyway, trying to remember all the stuff. So what is a PBR panel? Okay, a PBR panel. Um, I found these on Craigslist from the direct from the manufacturer. Um, they do take a little bit of work to find, um, and they are three feet from here to here. You know, three feet usable feet. feet. Um, the bottom one you're going to need to cut a piece and put on if you do the same thing I did. And uh, the ends, I so I got these already made up in 15 foot sections. You can buy them at Home Depot, but you're going to pay more. Um, I got them direct from the manufacturer. Um, look for a sheet metal place and then look up PBR panels. Um, not everybody knows, even the guys who had them, they didn't even know what they were. They didn't even know they were PBR panels. So um, they just, I, it was a sheet metal place I found on Craigslist. And there's actually two manufacturers right uh, within 50 miles of where I live. And so they're all over the place. There's these, and how they make these things is what they do is they have a big roll of sheet metal uh, and this is actually what they call galvalume which is not regular galvanized not hot galvanized but you could actually paint this um, fairly easily um, th this what they do is they take this roll of sheet metal and then uh, they have a big machine that stamps it so they take a roll they cut out the, the oh, they lay out a section cut it to right the right length so they'll cut it right to 15 14 16 12 whatever you tell them if you get it directly from them if you get it from home depot they're only going to say oh we can only we can only order 16s so um you'll get something a little bit different if you go direct to the manufacturer um they can make it to whatever length you want they'll they cut it they shear it and then stamp it so then it's exactly the right length so I got mine right to 15 feet, um, and then I got exactly 8 feet cut in the front, but of course you have to trim that to make it fit. So um, they also have a edge piece that can go on here, a piece of L metal. You could use regular roof flashing if you wanted to, get the brown stuff or whatever. I actually have some around here somewhere, and I've yet to find it. Uh, oh. We put it away wherever that is. I have a pretty large facility here, so I got to figure out where away was. <laughs> wherever away was, that's where they are, and I'll find them. But then I'll put corner edging on all this, so then you won't see this ugly holes and all that stuff there. So uh, it's just an idea for you guys that are, you know, trying to have winter storage or you know, keep your cars out of the sun or something. Um, being that this is eight feet, you can only put a smaller car in here. I don't think a full-size car. I mean, it would be really tight. You'd have to like climb out the window. You could probably do it. So you could do this to nine feet though, doing the same thing um, by not cutting out those. So if you wanted to go nine feet and you have a 124 square, square foot limit, you'd have to go to what, like 14 by nine, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not that good with math, so, but I'm just trying to say you could figure that out and then you could come up with a measurement that you need for, you know, your car, or whatever you want to store. If maybe it's a tractor, um, you know, maybe whatever, if, you know, figure out what you want to do, cause you can go nine feet by just eliminating those and then go nine feet to the bottom and still have a nice vertical wall versus having, you know, the tapered out walls. I just didn't like the tapered out cause it's useless. If the tapered out part, I got it wider on the bottom, I'm actually using more square foot of land and I'm not really getting anything from it. So um, it's better if I go vertical. So you can just do that by just leaving the middles the same and actually just getting one side mounted and then pushing the other one in and it just goes right straight. 
it finds its way to look like this. So anyway, it's just an idea for you guys. If you guys are looking for a steel building, um, just so you know, my, my rough cost, these were, it's $179 for the kit. Uh, the PBR panels were, um, I was trying to think it was $360 and then about 25 for the screws because you need to put all these screws with the, these have a, uh, have a, a rubber washer on them so they don't leak. So this building won't leak either other than the holes in the ends, which will be covered up with those other pieces. And then if you wanted to get rid of that, you could actually use spray foam inside those. And if you wanted the building to be insulated, um, I have another video on that if you look at my channel. Um, but you just use that, um, you can get the half inch foam uh, that's uh, and they have the high density foam was the best one and you just glue it right to this and then that's easy And it has a nice finish you can actually if you wanted to you could actually Screw drywall to here too. So if you really wanted to go nuts with it, you could um, I would not put a lot of heavy drywall in here um, I would refrain from doing that because you're gonna add all that weight and then you know, I'm, I'm not an engineer so uh, whatever you do pass to do this if you would decide you want to do it do it at your own risk there's um, to me this is pretty strong but an engineer, engineer might tell you different so I don't know um, if it's wind how much wind it will take how much earthquake it'll take I imagine it would probably take pretty pretty much um, anything I'm not worried about it at all I'm I get 80 mile an hour winds every once in a while and I'm not worried about it so it's pretty strong for me so anyway, all right, so that's it for the Harbor Freight Tools uh, temporary shelter to turn to a permanent shelter. Talk to you in the next video.